Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have the NA Conquest Sunday Night event for you. It should be a good one. We have two maps here. Our first map here is the Railroad Cut, a small map, and it'll be very fun with the Railroad Cut in the map. And then our second map for the day is the Towering Trunks, a bigger map, but still, it'll be very interesting to see the differences between the first round and the second round with the different size maps. Our teams for today, on the Union, we have the Pennsylvania Army, the 65th Illinois, 9th Corps, 6th Wisconsin, and the Rebel 2nd Corps. Whereas on the Confederacy, we have the Sussy Brigade, which consists of 1st Maryland, 5th North Carolina, 5th Florida, and the 1st Texas. Along with that, we have the Shenandoah Valley Regulars, the Army of Northern Virginia, and the 20th New York. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we have a wonderful conquest. We haven't seen conquest in a while on this channel, which is why we're doing it tonight. Union is beginning to move out as aggressively as they can to try to secure points, because as we know, this game mode conquest is a race for that middle point. You need to secure that middle point to really do anything here. Um, by the way, the scoreboard, qu I quickly updated it right before we started. If so if things look a little off, I do apologize for that. But it will be changing if we do conquest going forward and looking a lot nicer than what it will be. I removed a little bit of the bottom portion to make sure you could see more of the battle because that is obviously the most important thing. So with that out of the way... As we can see here, the Confederates are pushing for their close point at A. Not too surprising there. And Union is going to get to B way before the Confederates are going to even close. And the Union's being very smart. They are not stopping on the point. Instead, they are going past it to try to hit these Confederates, but they aren't going to fight them. I don't know why they're running past to that snake fence. Maybe to get a secure position before the Confederates can uh, light them up in the field. That's my guess for what is happening. So, with that being said, Confederates are just straight charging for the point here. Uh, Confederates have claimed the A point. Um, so, Union is in a deadlock fighting over this position here. Uh, as for now, Union is winning, but the mass of the Confederate team is pushing in here to take this out. And as you can see, it looks like Confederates are going to be able to just sweep the Union. We can see in the distance, Conf Union is securing C. But even though Union got the B first, Confederates were able to charge them out. Uh, yeah, that's really all there is to say about that. Union charged straight for this fence to get some cover. Um, which I don't blame them, but it allowed the Confederates to just straight bonsai for the point and get it. Now Union's charging back and Union has claimed C. So, fighting happening over here. Union actually now winning the fight here uh, with the Confederates on open. But we see those Confederates now coming from the A point. They are coming in straight to help their friendlies here out on the B point. This poor Union group up front here is going to get absolutely slaughtered. It is... Rebel 2nd Corps. Yeah, it really just looks like Rebel 2nd Corps is just bunched up here. Unfortunately, they're getting destroyed. So, now the mass of the Union team is coming on to this B point. Um, as you can see, though, Union is capping B. They are a little spread out, and thankfully, majority of their team is not even going to worry about that. They're going straight for that position up front they are not going to waste see the problem here is that you have all these bodies spread on point and confederates are going to be able to deal a lot of damage uh, it doesn't look like they're dealing that much damage but now confederates are beginning to charge out here uh, the a and b and sussy brigade up in front here more yeah it's really out you do see other cap guys in charge here like the 20th also pouring into that point to make sure they don't lose it So, Confederates are able to secure the position even though Union does have the B point. Union kind of pushed back here. So, with that out of the way, 
B has been neutralized by the Confederate forces here. B is being capped. There's no really no Union resistance against this Confederate force as Union got wiped a moment ago trying to hold this point. Now Union's going to have a very, very hard job because... It's going to be very hard to take the A point. The A point, you got to truck all the way around here. It takes some time. And then you got to get into this little divot here, which if you get here, Confederates can slaughter you from anywhere. Uh, if you try to take this point in the middle of the field, uh, you're just going to get slaughtered by Confederate gunfire. I mean, you can see Confederates taking a lot of losses and just trying to take the point. Um, yeah, the Confederates are very close to capping it. It is now... The point is successfully capped for the Confederates. That's going to be absolutely huge for them going forward in this battle. It will be very interesting to see what the Union does to respond to this Confederate push here. So, here. Confederates massing up on this wall to defend the B point. Confederates also shifting over in this direction, understandably, um, so that they can stop the Union from trying to push that A point, because there is no Confederates holding that position right now. They need someone to alert them if they move into that position. So, and as we can see, PA is moving down to fight the Union, or not to fight the Union, uh, yeah, they're team killing themselves. Uh, they're moving down this hill to engage with the Confederates, but the Confederates are already beginning to move in through here. Fifth Florida's flag is going to reveal their position. Union, I don't know if they're going to be revealed, but we're about to see a melee in the corn. able to win there despite the surprise I don't, I don't think they saw each other for a moment Union is going to keep on pushing through this area hey I think Helen Keller's so it looks like the US is going to get wiped at least this first wave there is a second wave coming in to assist this Union group but unfortunately it is so late um, and I don't they're not, they're half committing here, so they're going to be taking some out of lines. Now, the ninth, ninth Corps is moving up to this corner, and they're going to wipe it, but at the same time, we have this Confederate force, the 1st Texas, moving in here um, and pushing Rebel 2nd Corps back. Rebel 2nd Corps retreating, which is very interesting because, as we can see, both sides are moving out. Um, the ninth Corps is pushing those Confederates back right as the 1st Texas is pushing through this group. Uh, Ninth Corps is reforming there, kind of in an iffy spot. I don't see a rock, but then again, there's all those flags. Um, in terms of B, nothing's happened yet. Union going down to engaged here, which is something you do not want to see. Especially 36 and a half minutes into the round. That is just horrendous for the Union. So we have more Union pouring in, probably to assist 9th Corps as the Confederates try to deal with them. It is the 6th Wisconsin moving in to deal with these Confederates. 9th Corps being charged out in the back here. And 1st Texas wiping them. But at the same time, this Union force, 6th uh, Wisconsin, Led by Imperator Let is pushing up through here. Imperator, some of his men are charging, some are, but now they're all charging into the Confederate line here. And it looks like the Union is going to be wiped. They're going to be taking a lot of out of lines and stuff. So, for those of you who don't know, I should have explained this earlier, but how the flags work is. Basically, um, you Confederates have two cap, Union has one cap. You might think, oh, Confederates are dealing two flags worth of damage to the Union. No, they're only dealing one because they only have one more flag than the Union, so they get that one flag advantage. If the Confederates had two up and the Union had none, then it would be a 2-0 advantage. Um, so there is that.
We can see Confederates holding here. It's really just a stalemate going on for now as Union tries to find a way to break the Confederate line here. So, yeah, we are going to be waiting patiently. There is some skirmishing happening over on this end of the map. Um, uh, just in Parader and some Wisconsin guys really just enga engaging, but, but it, taking out of lines at the same time, which is not good for their team. Yeah, it really just looks like a shootout for now as more Union tries to push for A. I don't think they're going to try to retake B. Um, so I'm looking at the scoreboard and I'm really not liking it. So I'm going to switch back to the old view quickly. We'll be right back in a moment to catch these guys doing something. All right, we are back here. So you'll see a little less, but it looks a lot nicer. Um, that'll be updated better for next time so you can see more. But in the meantime, we do have the PA moving in through the woods. We saw that right before that quick break. Uh, and now they're going to be charging straight into the 1st Texas and 5th NC. Uh, up there, again, independent fire happening. But down here, intense gunfire occurring. More charge happening. PA is slamming right into the 1st Texas and some 5th NC guys. Actually, it's 5th NC and 1st Texas. No separation there. And the Confederates are going to be able to win that. However, in the meantime, we do see that a Union force, the 9th Corps is moving behind Confederate lines towards A, but they do not have a flag right now, which will hurt them if they're trying to secure the point. More of 9th Corps is pushing in. This is probably where they're trying to get the flags that group back there. Maybe a distraction force to start the uncap before they move in to cap the point. It probably makes sense. Where are the Confederates at right now? So we have 1st Texas, 5th NC in the back here. Flanking, it looks like the whole Union team is gunning it for A. Very risky. A lot of Confederates over here are not doing anything to help defend A. But they probably don't know what's hitting them. Uh, we have Rebel 2nd Corps here. Uh, probably going to try to hold those forces as this group, the 9th Corps and 6th Wisconsin, move in to uncap and recap A. So... This is a, this is, I love this. That's a railroad cut. It's beautiful. Uh, however, it can be very scary if Confederates get on your flank, which, as you can see, Confederates have not reacted at all to this. Um, instead, they have just sat back. Uh, they're going down to engage. Point A is uncapped here. So, no one's losing tickets from flags. Confederates are beginning to realize that. You can see them. They are now shifting. Over to A. A lot of Confederates gone, so Union should be able to cap this point. Let's see what Confederate force is moving through here. It is the ANV pushing up here. Uh, not a lot of Union on this side. A lot of Union on the other side, but this little cliff here is going to be hurtful. It's going to be like uh, Petersburg, if that, if I'm recalling that correctly with the explosive. Confederates should just get absolutely beautiful shots into this railroad pit, and Union's going to have a hard time hitting them. Uh, Union actually going down to taking losses. Wow. And Union's not going to be able to cap this. So, in terms of on B, you do have some skirmishers out here. Uncapping the point, which is not the worst idea right now. But Confederates are swarming A. Uh, a is going to be recapped by the Confederates very shortly. B is going to be decapped, though. What do we have in the woods here? In the woods, the 6th Wisconsin trying to go to A to help their guys. But they're running straight into this Confederate force. B is now neutralized. So, A is going to obviously go back into the hands of Confederacy. Confederates are swarming there. Some Union rambles in the woods, but most of the fighting will probably be happening here now. Rebel 2nd Corps slamming into the 20th New York and 1st Maryland. Um, no one has flags. Never mind. Cheesecake has a flag. I was wrong. So, both slides slamming in here. And it looks like Union is going to prevail on this charge. So the Rebel flag isn't going to be able to get up. He's in skirmishing. Union's got to stop this cap. They have enough guys to come in here and stop this cap. They need to do it because Confederates are really distracted. There's no one there. This is the Union's opportunity to take B while the Confederates are stuck screwing around today. 
That's, they they need to move in now. Like if if you if there's if there's ever an opportunity in conquest to take a point, it would be right there. Like that just makes the most sense, and we could see Union groups moving in. However, I don't see a Union group with a flag unless that one does. They do. They need to move in now. Confederates are still a ways away. B has been captured by the Confederates. Um, oh, this is so unfortunate. Why is that flag bear sitting back there? He needs to move. There he goes. Um, so, yeah. Union officer telling his men to go up to the snake fence. Uh, that's a brilliant idea. You don't want all your men clumped up on the B point and then to get shot by these guys in decent cover and get destroyed. Union forming up here. And who do we have? So, 9th Corps is forming up with the 6th Wisconsin uh, to deal with the Confederates that are moving through. Confederates, on the other hand, are moving down this left side. B has been uncapped. Um, Confederates are beginning to move down this way. And they're going to be getting nice flanking shots on the 9th Corps and 6th Wisconsin. Confederates are charging A and V. They're not going to be able to win with this tiny group. Um, however, I don't think it'll matter too much because Union is going to get destroyed. There. You can see artillery shots going down right now. Not making too much of a difference. This moment's huge. Union needs to cap and pull off or charge into Confederates because it looks like they're engaged in a melee over there. Union's cap to be. So, Union is mass charging in here to the Confederates. More well, like Confederates are charging the Union and Union's getting reinforcements. This is just a mess of melee happening on the field right now. Like, you can hear Imperator telling his men to charge into the Confederates here. Union's going to be able to push the Confederacy off. They do have a flag, so they will get respawns. Well done there. Confederates, though, we can see they are at sea right now. Decapping that point. This is uh, the Confederates. This is what they need to do. Unfortunately for the uh, Union, though, there's no Union here. The Confederates have such a nice point at A, because A and B are close to each other. Uh, I don't know where the Confederate spawn is. I presume it's somewhere to the southwest. But Confederates can hit both points coming in from their spawn. I guess Union could do the same. C just feels a lot more exposed than it needs to be. Confederates now pushing into the B point, bypassing the 6th Wisconsin that we saw there, and just going for the point. Uh, it'll be very, very interesting to see who does win this melee. It looks like Confederates have control as of right now, but more and more Union are trickling in, and that's really going to, I think, prevent this, this cap. We do see a Union force in the distance moving towards C. Confederates really left C undefended that's more of a distraction so union hopefully won't send all their men that way b has been neutralized so dang this is a lot closer of a match than i would have anticipated on conquest so it looks like we have fifth north carolina holding back at a um who do we have right here first maryland holding up here on point a and b is kind of getting wiped by most of the union here so Union's going to take control. The 5th Florida, who we saw on Cap C, is now holding up right here and taking shots into this Union group in the middle of the open. We see 1st Maryland over there doing it as well. Confederates, like, look how spread out everybody is. Um, Union here breaking, surprisingly. Um, however, do these guys have flag? Oh my goodness, if Union doesn't have a flag, they can't recap C. That's going to be terrible. Confederates now charging in. I'm guessing this is 1st Maryland and ANV. Actually, it's 5th. Most of Sussy is pulling in here to fight the Union on B to make sure it doesn't get capped. It's so close to being capped right now. And they get it off. However, I think this will be a temporary thing. Um... Confederates hitting, taking losses. Not too surprised there. I mean, this has been a great round. Just non-stop action, back and forth. 
really a good, fun round overall to watch. A and V and First Texas are the really majority of guys here. They are decapping that point. Union still not being able to capture that C point. But yeah, Confederates pouring in from there. You can see here, Confederates are pouring in from their spawn. Union is still kind of spread out here. They are not going in for the middle here. Confederates on cap B and they're now almost instantly capping. We do have this Union group charging into this position. However, they are all alone right now. Uh, Apollo Rebel Second Corps, the 5th Virginia, charging and dying. I get what they were trying to do. However, they were all alone and that charge was doomed to fail, resulting in a lot of out of lines for their team. Union just needs to sit back and let lead take out the Confederates that are holding here. So Confederates can't be. They're dealing two times the amount of flag tickets on the Union right now. Which is insane to think about. Union. Do they have a flag over there? They are. They are finally beginning to cap. They have capped the point. I, I don't see how Confederates lose this match. They After the long haul of fighting, they still control two points. They are ahead. One ticket morale stage on the Union. Um, I don't see how the Confederates lose this. In any way shape or form Fire 50. union seems to just really be reforming right Probably. now Probably not. hoping that they can find a way to break the confederates or if anything take two of the points which is what the union needs to do let's try to get see if we can get an overview these maps are so big you gotta like get these overviews to see who is doing what? So we saw part of Ninth Corps holding here on the corner. We saw more of Ninth Corps pushing this way as well. I think Sixth Wisconsin is following as well. Yep, and Parador with the Sixth Wisconsin is moving up to push A again, which isn't a bad idea because again, trying to take the the point in this big open field is absolutely hard, and you're going to take a lot of casualties doing. It. Same for A. Unlike last time now, the Confederates are prepared. You can see a Union force all the way back there. Uh, they're trying to get flanks around, but that doesn't make any sense uh, with this Union group. Either go all the way around or go straight at it. Because by doing this, you're now splitting your forces uh, and allowing the Confederates to defeat you in detail. Oh my god! Yeah, Union's going to be stopped here by the first Texas. Well done to them. Who do we have going all the way out here? We have Ninja and the Pennsylvania Army. I Even if they push with their friendlies, I mean, they probably would have lost. Confederates are swarming that position right now. Um, so, yeah. That would, that, honestly, Union might could have been able to push B, but there's so many Confederates moving over here. 20th New York is now pushing this side. Uh, they're going to get really nice positions for holding B, or pushing A for that matter, or C, sorry. For some reason, I thought there was a flag for a second there, but I don't know why I would think that. Um, oh, my God, so many Confederates in the woods here. And the poor PA is all alone against the whole world. So Confederates knowing they're there, obviously you just heard some shots there from the Confederates. Uh, not a lot of them though, PA should be able to take care of them. They do have a flag too, right here, right here. which I think will be huge Union to the for getting respawns. Union hitting the last stand, Confederates will probably hit breaking um, within the next couple of minutes, but I don't think that even matters, uh, really. The rest of the Union is being held up at spawn by the 20th. They're retreating over to that barn. Uh, you can see these Confederates. Who are they? 5th NC is pushing down the railroad cut to go wipe out the PA. So the PA is falling back. V has been neutralized. That's fascinating. Right as that happens, though, 5th NC 
They're swarming right into the back of the PAP. Has got a charge. They can't. They can't run away. They're gonna take so many casualties. Uh, retreating. They might as well just charge. So fifth NC is gonna wipe uh, PA there. That's a given. Union trying to retake this point, and as you can see, that's going very, very well for them. Dang, that's a sad to watch. Poor, poor Union. Over on the other side, like, I think Union is rallying at sea to make one final defense. Um, at least that's what we heard from PA. However, I'm not 100% sure the whole Union team is doing that. We have 6th Wisconsin and part of 9th Corps here. Which is the bulk of the Union team, so I pre presume that they would all start heading back here. Who's in the house, though? A war Ninth Corps. Hey, you want to go find a bed? Uh -huh. Move! Out the way! No, Somebody you move! Blue pants. Your nun shall pass! Okay, okay. Well, we only watch the stairs. So, Confederates take B in a Don't last ditch a effort. Union is trying to hold the house. Oh my goodness. Ain't no way. First Maryland is pushing through. They, they got to charge that house. They probably think they're in the barn. Can we hear them saying anything? FBI! FBI what? Shoot that fucking dog! Okay. <laughs> uh, that's not what I thought the FBI said going in, but First Maryland is moving in to clear the barn, which has no Union in it. Um, so that sucks for them, but, oh my god, look at the amount of Confederates, what are numbers looking like? Uh, wow, okay, so Confederates have a one-man advantage, so this isn't by, it just looks like Confederates have a lot more, because Union's in last stand, they're taking a lot of casualties. I want to see that house breach, but for now, a half the Union team is holding up at sea, who is pushing this position, probably First Texas. Fifth NC is there with Fifth Florida. They are going to slam right into this Union force. Alma is going to win this charge. It's, uh, it looks like there are more Confederates that are going to be pouring in, but uh, I don't know. It's very close. I want to. So, Confederates look like they're actually going to win. I need to see this house breach. Yo, up to the front door. This is probably the best view of the house you're gonna get. Pistol up there. No, it's a whole regiment on the second story, boys. Just go up the stairs. Get up the stairs. Go up the stairs. Get up the stairs. Get up the stairs. Get that door open! 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 Well, good thing that that group of people do not do that in real life. Oh my goodness. That was hilarious. So really, just that was total domination by the Confederates. No real way to say it other than that. Um, sorry for the scoreboard at the beginning. I'm just going to keep it as it is, and then I'll fix it going forward so that it looks nice. And while improving your view, but well done the Confederates Union, I think did what they need to do. It's just unfortunate when you lose two flags early on in the game. It's just it's such a brawl trying to get them back. But very fun, very exciting, very fast movement. It was that was very entertaining to watch. With that being said, hopefully we'll get another good round in the second round. See you guys then. Here we are with our next conquest round. A little bigger of a map, so it, I probably won't be as fast as we normally see. Like, look how far these points are. Like, look how far I have to get up in order to see all three points. A lot bigger, a lot more fun. Union artillery, though, having a very 
good position on this map. Uh, right on sea, they can load some beautiful canister, and they also have just a nice view of this field. Uh, actually, I kind of want to look at something. How bad of a crest? Eh, it's not bad. It kind of looked like the crest of the hill could have done something, but not really. So the majority of the fighting should be over C, the point we were just looking at. However, when we've seen this battle play out historically, the fight is usually over A. Um, but we will see if that is different. Confederates sending two prongs out in the distance here. One going for B and the other going for C. Whereas Union is doing the same, except they are going for A and then they are going for C. Do I know why C is the middle point? No. But it is what it is. So Union will cap A, Confederates will cap C. This point over C will be A and B. Sorry, I, I'm just instinctively calling this B. That's why I screwed that up. So Confederates are going to get B, Union's going to get A. This point is going to be the point that's fought over. And Union should have advantage with this artillery. Uh, I would hope. Um, yeah, Confederates do have an advantage artillery at B. It's kind of in a worser spot though. And by Confederate main, whereas this one is right in that middle point union, taking the early lead here, getting that a point union looks like they're going to be able to get to these points of contention first. Um, artillery, oh, artillery. This is a perfect opportunity. Union's getting there first. Confederates are coming through the woods here, though. Uh, they will have nice saw shots off of that snake fence. Um, Confederates not even worried about A, which Union is now moving out. I think they're going to go for B. Confederates aren't even at B yet. So Union being very, very smart. They are not bunching up on the C point. They're getting on the snake fence so that they're going to have even ground when fighting the A and B. PA, very well done there. They aren't going to win that, but it's going to give enough time for these more forward friendlies, the six Wisconsin, to push in and secure this position. Union capping C as well. So Confederates need to get moving here on either of the points. It looks like they're at B right now. You can see that on the left side of your screen. But Union is actually going, getting in here, and they're going to be flanking this Confederate force, I think. Maybe they'll go straight for B. I don't know. Uh, we have the Rebel 2nd Corps here. Where are they going? Ah, they're going in for them. I like it. The Butter is capping D, no surprise. An intensive charge here that the Union is winning. Uh, so Confederates do still have a position here. However, Union is right on their back door, and on top of that, Union has artillery and men. Actually, there's a decent amount of men here that I didn't see before. Who is the officer? Imperator walking up. He's, these should be easy shots. Gets another kill. Get, wow, that's a clutch shot. For those of you who don't know, if you're reloading and you get hit in melee, you cannot finish the reload as an officer. Uh, Union could just charge those Confederates out and beat them, but I don't think they will. More Confederates moving in to hold this position. Who do we have here? We have Duke from 5th Florida moving in there. We also see the 65th Illinois. A couple of those guys with Rebel 9th Corps. Not Rebel 9th Corps. They play with Rebel 2nd Corps a lot, though. So, But regardless of that, Ninth Corps could charge these guys out and easily win this fight against the 5th Florida. Which, I don't know who they're, they're shooting after that Rambo. Does Union even recognize their hair? I don't think they do. I don't think 9th Corps knows, because as you can see, Union's splitting off here into two different groups. One group that notices the 5th Florida, the other group that doesn't notice the 5th Florida. Uh, we do have a charge happening on this side. 6th uh, Wisconsin getting a little aggressive here. Um, but they will... Ooh, actually, there's two officers left with pistol shots. Union's going to be able to win that charge. Um, but right as they do win this charge, 
uh, fifth North Carolina is now pushing in and they should be able to clean sweep this area and push for the point if they want to this ninth core force they did wipe fifth Florida out but they could easily move over here to assist their friendlies um, I quickly want to check the Union forces that are holding the a position for the Union uh, it's ninth core uh, Ninth Corps is holding up at the A point. It looks like they're moving down to C. A lot of the fighting's on C, and I really like to see that. Confederates, not surprisingly, charging this position here, uh, as they should with the opportunity they have. Confeder Union artillery getting a kill. And 5th NC is going to be able to start capping this point. We're taking fire from uh, the this will be very interesting to see how fast Union will take this because no Union is really in position to stop the cap. Maybe this group. Maybe this Rebel 2nd, 9th Corps group. <laughs> Maybe this 9th Corps group will be able to stop them. There is Rebel 2nd Corps here too. Uh, however, we do have the 20th New York in here just in time to stop this Union push towards the point. A lot of point blank fighting, not really charging. Union does have more men than the 20th there. Um, however, the 20th is allowing the Confederates to uncap this point and now cap it in a moment. There we go. So, Confederates do have two points, however, 20th just got pushed back by this force of Union. I'm even gonna, there's like three regs there. Um, first Texas is here fighting against some of 9th Corps. But really, the Confederates have basically been pushed off except for the 5th NC. Which 5th NC is going to get some nice shots. Confederates going down to engaged here. Not a whole lot of supplies. There, seeing as Union has two points capped this entire time. Uh, okay, these they're just using. I almost thought Confederates had artillery here, which would kind of be funny to watch. But Confederate infantry using the caissons as very nice cover. We can see some Rambo dueling happening on this contention point. <laughs> And we have a lot of Union over here. Again, as we saw with the last map, except this is on a much bigger scale now, we can see that the Union is so, so spread out. I mean, Confederates are not as badly spread out, but they're spread, um, which is what we see in a lot of these matches. These matches feel a lot more quick pace. At least the, this event has been very quick pace. People are constantly moving. No one's sitting and shooting unless they're defending a point, of course, which is understandable. So 5th NC is taking some of their men. C has been uncapped here by the Union. 5th NC is taking to some of their guys to engage with the 6th Wisconsin. Uh, point blank shots. A lot of melee. It looks like... So Union is winning for now. Uh, over here. It's still kind of close. Both sides have kind of split off. Not really any fighting in the middle. You can see some Confederates charging out in the distance. 5th NC, C. Murphy is reinvigorating this charge on the PA. 6th Wisconsin, Shenandoah, regulars, all of them. Why not just name all the Union regiments at this point? Uh, in terms of the point, though, more Confederates. Who are these guys? 1st Texas have pushed forward. Union hitting engaged. Stop Union from copy if they were which I, I don't know if they were I, know, I wasn't looking so rebel second corps is now engaging with the ANV on this side of the river the point river. an intense melee happening here I think the Union's gonna be able to overcome this Confederate force uh, but Confederates are recapping the point first Texas is the point is now Going to be recapped, and the Confederates didn't win that charge over there, but they didn't lose either. Union didn't push them off easier either. So both sides will be fighting. Confederates need to defend this point. Union needs to take it. 
Union's not even worried about going for B, and I don't blame him. It's such a big map that why waste the time? Maybe send a skirmisher force over there because it's such a big map. Three men could easily slip over there. Uh, I've done it myself where me and two other people have uncapped a point five times during a match, which almost helped our team come back and win. We, we lost, but it definitely made it closer. I think it's a strategy Union could use right now is send three men over to B, uncap it, because I guarantee the Confederates would send a regiment over there, thinking that the Union does have a regiment over there. I would say the same for Confederates. However, um, we could see Union is actually defending A. Confederates aren't defending B. There is a Confederate force contesting A, first in Maryland here. Um... I don't know if this is just a distraction, but it is. you can't really call it a distraction when the Union's been there the whole time. It's not like they're spending more men over here. So, unless First Maryland intends to push forward, they haven't really changed much. If anything, they have removed CSA players from the field. But then again, they don't know that they've been sitting there the whole game. Uh, we haven't seen Confederates push over this whole time. Mostly independent fire. Ninja trying to hit some shots with his pistol. Now running up and dies. Ninja taking a rip. But, uh, yeah, Union basically gone except for the A point. A lot it made. And then a decent force fighting over this point over here. So, Union game plan to win is to send a couple guys over to B, pull more Confederates off C, and push C and take it. Confederates just can't lose either of the two points they have. I doubt they're going to lose B because Union isn't going to send regiments or skirmishers over there. We've rarely seen it happen. I think it should become a tactic. But it's risky though because right, you send three guys out, that's nine tickets if they die. More like 13, two out of lines and a skirmishing guy. Uh, we have more Confederates. So we have, I think, First Maryland on the left, unless that's a new group, but First Maryland has repositioned itself. Which could be a possibility. So 5th NC is now assisting the 1st Maryland in engaging the 9th Corps players on point. Uh, Confederates have moved over to the other side of the field being more aggressive making sure Union can't get over there. Um, and it's forcing this 9th Corps move group to um, push through the woods to where the PA is. Um, but those Confederates can just shift down easily help those guys out over there. Confederates have a firm grip on this map. And even though we saw the Union ahead on tickets earlier, I think when we see taking losses, both teams will hit it around the same time, and then Confederates will start to take the lead, assuming we see the same pace that we are right now. Let's take a look here. Fifth North Carolina repositioning themselves on these rocks. Um, probably to get better shots, but Union kind of Otis, spread out in their groups here. Damn, that was a rush. So two ninth core groups, regiments holding on that position, or maybe companies. I don't know. Um, we can see that this Confederate force, the A and V, is pushing through the woods to deal with the ninth core guys and also help the friendlies who are being charged out on point right now. First Texas being charged out, and Fifth Florida along with that. So six Wisconsin. I thought I saw PA here. Maybe Ninja was just here and they're at main now. But Union wipe gonna be able to wipe this confederate force in this area and they're gonna be able to start on capping but the a and v is right there so a and v is gonna be able to get some beautiful shots on the union i doubt union's gonna pull off the point they're gonna surround the point pray that they can uncap and recap before taking too many casualties union actually hitting taking losses first very surprising um i i won't be surprised i'll oh, sorry i'll be surprised if the Confederates don't hit taking losses within the next minute. Um, so, we do see a lot of Union over here. Um, they did a whole day. 5th NC pulling off. I assume 1st Maryland has as well. And um, Union now charging their men from A to C. A is, C is uncapped, rather. Confederates not charging straight in, but rather trying to use the caissons as cover. At least half the half the start of the charge was. And V's not going to be as effective as I thought they would be. Uh, I don't know if Union will be able to get the cap up though. 
Because there's a lot of Confederates here. Maybe they will be more effective than what I said. Union has two flags. They need to run away with those flags. Got, there's no Union left. You need to run. Union's able to get that flag there. Uh, however, uh, more Union trickling in against a large Confederate force. Uh, they're all going to get slaughtered. You can see you, more Union charging across the field. The more Union way back there. I, those guys might be going for B. But Union has a perfect opportunity to get free shots on the Confederates. They have this nice snake fence. Confederates have nothing. They're all bunched up around the point. Doing a little cult meeting around the point. Actually, yeah, these guys are going for B. I like this. I like this a lot. Let's go see who these guys are. They deserve credit. It is the part of Rebel 2nd Corps, 6LA, a mix of company D, B, and D, D, B, and C. I said that in order, guys. The alphabet goes D, B, C, not B, C, D. Um, anyways, Confederates are going to be able to retake this C point here. Union. Got some shots off, albeit. However... Not enough to thwart them. Uh, I'm surprised Confederates haven't hit taking losses. They should probably hit it soon. We do have this Confederate force pushing in the 5th NC. They came from A. And now they're going to get nice flanking keep positions keep the on the Union that are holding here. Yeah, so you can hear one of the 5th NC guys saying, stab and run. So that means stab the guy and continue going forward. Don't try to continue killing him because the guy behind you will get that second stab and finish him. Uh, we can see Union now realizing that the 5th NC is there. I thought there would be a lot more 5th NC alive than those four guys there. <laughs> but Union's going to be able to hold that easily. So... Union appears to be reforming at main. Confederates still not at taking losses. I wonder if the fact that Confederates have been engaging their whole force in not defending B is why they're able to retake C easily. But, um, yeah, because no Confederates are defending B. So they can put all their forces to taking C. However, things like this can happen, which is unfortunate. Um... But yeah, compared to the Union, though, Union has a whole regiment are part of a regiment holding it A. So Confederates will always outnumber Union when fighting on C. Because if you look at the server numbers right now, Confederates have four more men. Oh my goodness, C. Murphy has 19 down bolts. John has 16. Doug has 11. Zoo has 15. They're trying to set world records today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but, yeah. I like Union uncapping B. They need to do that. They need to really do something about C. I'm intrigued to see how many forces the Confederates will send to take back B. Um, does this group have a flag? I would presume they have a flag. That was a good call. Florida's bringing our flag back to B to cap it. Copy that. So, all these men are moving in to fight. Nobody. These poor Confederate souls. Uh, whether that Union group, that Union group went way far back. I think they're holding. They're gonna repeat aye, aye. this, which I like it. 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 So, Confederates do not. Look at look how many men the Confederates are saying went to, this way. Do these guys have flags? They do. So, most of Sussy Brigade is not engaging right now. Um, which Union is taking this opportunity to push the point. This is the best thing that they can do right now. I like it. Um, they're not putting all their men out in the middle of the open field, which is good. I wish Union... I actually I don't... I'm not going to say anything about the guys at A for Union. They're making sure Confederate skirmishers can't go out. And don't cap the point, which is what the Union just did. We can see that Union... Oh, those guys are coming back. I don't like that, but... C is slowly being uncapped. It's not even being uncapped. Never mind. Why isn't someone moving that flag down? Hey, stand ah. right here. It's a bold thing to say. <laughs> I've been here for like for like a minute and a half. Thir 
They're taking so many casualties. There we go. Ah, the moment he tries to move it up, the Confederates shoot him down, and now First Texas is charging him in. The Confederates retake B. Union just lost their opportunity to do something. But we do have a Confederate horse back here, which is distracting the Union team here. A and B is all the way back here. Massive charging by the Union. A and V is actually holding their ground very, very well uh, against this Union charge. I think they will fade out, but they definitely did what appeared to be a lot more casualties. It looked like there was a lot more Union before that charge. So you now see a Confederate force pushing towards the A point. They're going to hit some Union skirmishers. They're going to get some easy out of line kills here. Fifth NC. Um, I've seen a lot here. Oh, I dropped that one. That, that was a good shot. Nice. Another one. Well, there's two out of line oh, just 10 oh, seconds. Florida, no, don't stop here, Florida. Don't stop here. Keep going. Keep going. So, I don't know if they're going to go for A or if they're going to try to flank around at C. Confederates have a firm grip of C. If Union hasn't retaken C at this point in the game, I don't see any reason why they would take C the rest of the game. Uh, Union, those five guys drew so many Confederates off of fighting. I mean, there's so many Confederates not at sea right now. Um, but the Union's opportunity is gone. Maybe they'll try it again. I don't know. But 5th Florida and the 5th North Carolinians are now Peace. moving down this snake fence to go engage with this Union force flanking. We saw them do it earlier. The um, they definitely did deal some damage. How many Union are at spawn? A lot of Union spawn. Look how far away the Union are. It's so hard to... Uh, this is... It's, look how the distance is so far away. Confederates have been winning a majority of these melees too. Um, which... That means they can keep their flags. They can keep spawning men from this far away. Or Confederates are just moving quicker. I don't know. But 5th NC, 5th Florida charging in. This charge and some, maybe some independent fire to our right has caused the Union to hit breaking. Uh, this charge, 5th NC is... Wow, okay. I thought there would be more Confederates. Um, I overestimate things, but... This group is cruising through. It looks like they wiped the 6th Wisconsin. They're continuing to push through. Hit more of Rebel 2nd Corps now. They are doing the battle cry of the 9th New York. Maybe a distraction. Maybe like, hey, we're friendly. Don't shoot us. But wow, more to first. First Texas is joining this now. And Union is going to get absolutely wiped there by Sussy Brigade. And now C is completely in control of the Confederates. No Union group really threats this position. You do have these guys, but these guys are going to die. It's a, it's a mix of Rebel 2nd Corps and 6th Wisconsin. B has been neutralized, um, which is what they need to be doing. We do see an officer over here for the Confederates. I wonder who it is. Hobson. Probing here. Uh, we do see Afton getting killed by Colonel Conrad. These Confederates are coming in. Killing that guy. Ah, really? Really? You're going to do this trick right now? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. <laughs> they, they, they really want to make sure that guy is dead. Um, yeah, I don't blame the Union. The Union needs to do that more often. Um, but the Confederates are ready now. So it sucks. We do see Union out here in the field. I think this is artillery. Um, oh, come on, TJ. Get him. There you go. So it's only a matter of time before union hits last stand and this round is over um confederates repositioning so that they can get better ground here oh my goodness they're gonna get three out of lines with dj we, no way he gets another pick oh my god did we trade yeah you're trash dude 
Did I get him? Did I get him? No, you didn't, dude. It's unacceptable. Deco is disbanded because of you. Right. Yeah. Jeez, Jeez, Jeez. So that was a trading kill. That was funny. That's good to look at. Um, so a swarm of Confederates at B. Recapping it, we could see there's a mess happening at A right now. Let's see what's happening over here, which really just looks like some Confederate forces. First, Maryland's getting flanked. Uh, I don't think they were ready. You could hear Scott's yell behind. Um, So, 6 Wisconsin wiping the first Maryland. I don't think it means too much in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it does, but Confederates are count to be. And it's only a matter of time. Because Confederates have had this flag for such a long time. That's going to deal a lot of damage to the Union forces. We can see what Union force is up on over here. So, we have PA. Great cover. Double push. Double march. Moving forward here, unfortunately, there might be some Confederates over here. I don't know. Maybe. Um, PA pushing up through. Gonna get you, hey, Blue. This area. Like they are trying Rainbow to push right. forward, probably to the snake fence. Um, those fifth NC skirmishers are gonna let their uh, friendlies know that some Union is coming. It is the PA. You do see Union behind. A lot of the Union though is hunkered down today. I don't know if they're getting ready for a last stand, but. Uh, we can see the 5th Florida reacting to the Union here. The 5th NC helping out. 5th NC now charging the Union, countercharging. charging hear some rebel yells as the 5th NC just went through and wiped them out. Why are you running? Why are you running? There we go. Took him a moment. See, yeah. Murphy's just, uh, and Doug are just telling his men to push through. They aren't stopping. They're going all the way. They do not care. Um, Union got to get last stand soon. Within the next minute and a half, I reckon. A union is actually pushing for Confederate spawn. I can't believe we missed this. Um, I think they're going for B. Union slamming straight into the Confederate respawns. I think they surprised them. Uh, Ninth Corps moving in here. So, Zap having the last defense there. And with that being said, Union pushing through. They're going for B as a last ditch hope. However, they're probably going to hit last stand uh, to make this really even matter. Unless they're just sniping out of lines. Actually, I don't think they're going for B. They're so far away. You can see some Union Rambos over there um, distracting some Confederate forces. But I think Union is just d distracting these Confederate respawns for now. 6LA on Kucha. 6LA on Kucha over here. Never mind. They're moving towards B. You see some Confederates on the corn. There we go. Not surprised at all. The last stand. For those of you who don't know what last stand is, we saw this last round. Uh, I didn't explain it though. If you die right before the last stand is hit, you can spawn in right as last stand starts. But if you spawn, if you die after last stand starts, you can no longer respawn as that team. So, with that being said, this is only a matter of time before the Union team loses. Um. This is probably where we're going to see this last bit of fighting is over at B. A lot of Union pouring in against a lesser Confederate force. Um, Confederates might hit breaking before we uh, end here. I won't be surprised if they do. But both sides pouring into this meal. The Confederates all bunched up. Union not really bunched up here. Confederates countercharging into the Union line here. Um, Union are actually winning here. 
A lot of Union trickling. A lot of Confederate auto lines are more like Rambos. Uh, pushing in here. Is there any Confederates on the B point? Not really. So Union has basically a free path. Still some melee happening though. Uh, Confederate just respawned and now died. So Union's able to win, but they take a heavy toll with that. Confederates moving into A to cap this point, which will start a three minute counterattack phase. And then after that three minutes is done, the uh, game will be over. So how counterattack works in this game is regardless of what stage the other team is in, there is a three minute counterattack. He's been neutralized. Oh boy. Maybe this isn't as done as I thought it would be. It's Confederates are still gonna um, win this game. Uh, we do have a small Union force over here. But now it works regardless of what the other team stage is. If you cap all three points, a counterattack will begin. It's three minutes long. The other team has to uncap and recap a point in order to stop that counterattack, um, which is very hard to do in three minutes. So Confederates are going to get A. Um, and it looks like Confederates are going to be able to hold B. You do have some, a couple Union guys over here, and they have a flag. If one Union guy, if one of these guys dies here, uh, that'll be the game. Uh, they won't be able to cap that flag up. So any right, Confederates... Uh, I'm down, Mac, lead him somewhere where you can stay alive. Right, Bradley, we're over. <laughs> Vlad just executed Find that to guy. Hold up. Oh, no. Hi, There's Bradley, more. Maybe the house finds you guys. Comes. Oh, I got you for me. Hold on, Archer. I'll protect you in my life. Ah, come at us, you bastard. Oh. So that does it here on the B point. So Union does uncap, but they won't be able to recap it at any point. Fighters should just try to wipe out Union. This is such a huge map. There's not a lot of Union left. The majority of the Union forces is right there. That is Rebel 2nd Corps. Where could Fighters charge him? He missed a charge into some 9th Corps guys. But... So, yeah, Confederates are now moving towards C. They're about to engage with 9th Corps. I think if this group gets white for the Union... Um, the round should finish. I don't see too many more Union left alive on the field. I don't know why Union's running away. They're delaying the inevitable. Sir, I understand that you want to win the game. <laughs> Union is delaying the you inevitable. Know, Confederates cap B. A and B are capped by the Confederates. Stab him. Oh, you're not going to kill me. Wait, don't turn your back, bitch. <laughs> Up, honk. Keep running, keep running. We gotta go. So, yeah. Uh, there actually is a sizable Union force, sizable at this point in the game, if you want to call it that. Uh, six men holding here. I think that's really all that's left for the Union, is that ninth core group that we just saw in the six Wisconsin group. Do dining groups. Let's get up over here. Confederates are trying to chase down this Union group. This Union group's going for B. We see Tori here. Our mission. Cap the B point. He sees him. Hit the shot. I don't think he's going to shoot. We do hear some shots happening over here. Duncan over here getting kills. Wow, that guy good at stabbing. Dodge some shots, hit some shots. So the only cap group that can really do anything for the Union is this group right here. Um, no one's by them. Fighters about to run in these guys. Here's CJ. And that did it, actually. So, Confederates winning the game. Um, really, I think Union had a good start, but... They had to, uh, a regiment on A. Confederates had nobody guarding anything. So Confederates could always outnumber them doing that. Confederates just did a good job at holding points. They lost B, but they retook it quickly. They overreacted, I think, at trying to retake it. But Union didn't take that opportunity to try to retake it. So uh, good fight. 
fun to see Conquest, especially after seeing Skirmish all weekend. Very enjoyable. A lot of casualties. Very quick. I can't wait for the next Conquest battle. And with that being said, we'll see you guys in the post-game interview. Here we are with the post-game interview for the NA Conquest Sunday night event. It was lots of fun to see, especially after broadcasting Skirmish for the whole weekend. So we have a bunch of leaders from tonight's events, and we're going to be asking them questions of strategy and more. So... With that being said, the two maps tonight were Railroad Cut and Towering Trunks. The CSA won both maps in a decisive fashion despite Union capping two out of the three points at the beginning of the round. So, let's start by going through the CSA representatives. First, we have Zoo. Yes, I am Zoo of the 5th Florida, also known as the Better 5th in the Sussie Brigade. After all, Florida comes before North Carolina, alphabetically. Thank you. Next, we have Tall Gray. Uh, to correct, uh, I went to the union side to help with balance the numbers. Oh. And uh, although I was aware of the EU Confederate plan, I know that most plans don't work anyway, so it didn't matter. <laughs> All right. Then feel free to answer both sides' questions if you feel like you have a say in that. Uh, next, we have C. Murphy. See Murphy hey. so well. Okay, so Murphy. I'm back. There we go. All right, so what's up, guys? What is this, the interview, like officially? Yeah. Who are you? You're introducing Oh, me. all right, yeah. So I'm C. Trip. Murphy of the 5th North Carolina Elite Rifles. I am Lieutenant General of the Sussex Brigade. And yeah, that's it. All right, thank you. Next, we have Zapstar. I am Zapstar, the first Maryland, a mere crumb of a captain. However, I do my work in the field. Thank you. And then last but not least, we have Texan Walrus. Hello, I'm Texan Walrus. I'm, uh, I guess, second in command for First Texas and returning member from Sussie Brigade. That's about it. All right, cool. Thank you. Those are our CSA representatives. Now our USA representatives. We have Corded. Gordon, Captain of Delta Company in 6th Louisiana and part of 2nd Corps. Thank you. Next we have Neoff. Uh, I'm Neoff, a 2nd Lieutenant for Charlie Company, 2nd Corps, 6th Louisiana. And then last but not least, we have Star. Hello, hello. Uh, Colonel Star, uh, Commanding Officer of the Fighting 5th Virginia, 2nd uh, Corps. All right, cool. And then tonight, myself as Guardian Eagle was announcing, so let's get into the first round of Railroad Cut. CSA won that round, so what was your guys' strategy going into the match, and how did you react to the ever-changing battlefield? All right, so our strategy was to push the middle point, as it normally is on Conquest. We had 5th Florida, back cap, A, and we just wanted to hold those two points for the game because that's how you win and that's what we did yeah any, any other, other confederates comments? yeah uh maryland of that map we did our best to secure that uh, middle point with uh fifth nc and then from there we fell back to the straight rail fence that's uh kind of towards our side of the field we played on the right side and our objective was to try and counter any Union push along that flank. And we did our very best to do that for most of the map. Multiple points from the enemy at charge, the middle point. We advanced to the middle and re-secured it in favor of a Confederate victory. Uh, I guess I'll go next if no one else wants to go. Uh, this is the first map, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, first map, as uh, said, just hit to the middle point, and then after that, I was uh, basically got told by the voices, like you know, my NCO's officers, yeah, guys, we gotta help out Fifth Florida. So we, we we helped them out on the left side afterwards, and after that, it was uh, just reacting to enemy movement and what was the best decision, best way to flank him and help out other units. That's basically it. What about you, Zoo? We loaded buck and ball. We shot buck and ball. Oh, we killed a bunch of Yankees. Many well Yankees. Well, well, well said. Concise. <laughs> That's how to do it. Yes. So, cool. Now moving on to the USA. What was the USA strategy going into the first round of Railroad Cut, and how did you guys react to the ever-changing battlefield? 
off the rip initially, we sent the 6th Wisconsin to camp the close point while the rest of the team uh, spawned in and went straight to the center. Our goal was to stop the Confederate advance at that fence line they like to hunker down on. Um, my unit, the 5th Virginia, got there, and upon setting up on the fence and getting our bayonets on, we looked to our left and see them streaming across the field to our left instead of at us towards the fence. And that kind of just caused confusion among our entire team, uh, which ultimately ended in us getting pushed back. Uh, from there, it's just going to us moving through the corn, trying to get on their flanks, and them just kind of stuffing it in our faces each time. Any other That's pretty much yeah. the same for us. Uh, we are all pretty much moving together, at least at the start. And then, like Star said, trying to get on the flanks and it not working out. Yeah, uh, pretty much it was just majority of the forces was pushing in on the first point or the middle point to try to cap it and hold it. Uh, we just couldn't hold it. So that was that. And there That's was it. an instance or two where we were able to get behind and get in the A point, but uh, just it being so close to their spawn, they were quickly able to retake. Uh, so, really, uh, they just had an answer for all of our moves. To, to add to the unit perspective, uh, myself as a Confederate, uh, from what we were able to tell, we are able to just very much secure both flanks early on and then just fire into a ball every time they advanced into that middle point. And uh, my God, were some of those battles glorious for both sides. You lads did fantastically. It was an honor to fight against you. Likewise, and when, you, uh, when you're sitting on point trying to decap and then you hear the voice of Captain Zapstar coming, roaring at you, it is uh, it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you lie. honor me, sir. <laughs> Yeah, that the accent compared with uh, everything else, it it it's it's a force. I'll give you that. Zeal and fury, first Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Star. Distant cousin of mine, this man. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. With that being said, we'll move on to the second round. Towering trunks, a lot bigger of a map. CSA did win that map. So again, we'll start with the CSA. What was your guys' strategy going into that round, and how did you react to the ever-changing battlefield? I think that was our strategy. We reacted to the ever-changing battlefield. <laughs> That's kind of how it went. There was some confusion as to, and not for Zoo. I know Zoo wants to say something. There was confusion for the rest of us as to which point was the middle point. Some of us thought it was A. Zoo knew that it was C. So the enemy are they knew what they were doing. They took both of them off the off the bat. Good on you guys. We went to C or B, we went to B point. We fifth and C capped it. Rest of us were rallying around and ready to push Charlie. And we got it. I can't speak on everyone's perspective, but we just reacted. So yeah. That was fifth and C. Uh yeah, it was just a cluster from the beginning because I don't know where they go to A to B to uh, and also yeah the that I don't know I I mean I guess it really call an argument I didn't say anything because I didn't even know the map <laughs> I was like okay I'm just gonna keep out of this but that along with uh imagine like 30 of your guys just screaming in VCs and along with charging in game because oh my very loud are we talking but, about the second map yeah but uh for uh, I just put my guys around C and they just, I don't know, they just went goblin mode. I don't know. That, Listen, that was basically Killer and Murphy both wrong about what was closest to our objective, the midpoint, and what objective we should be going for. They wanted to go for A. I just knew what was closest. All right. and what, yeah, it's not A, it's B. A was, a was B's, closest. B's closer. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> That's not all a, you want to know, gentlemen. No, no, no. Oh, all I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is that C was the middle point, and beforehand, we had a little a little discussion. Really, it wasn't because most of the team had left at that point, but one of the guys mm -hmm. from 20th New York showed me the map, and I'm like, all right, yeah, A looks close, B, 
also looks close. They are equally close for us. We can go for both of those. But if we further away to. from the Union as well. If we want. B is definitely further from the Union. So we knew we could send some small force to B while the rest of us either go to A. Which is, yeah, C, but you stole and, our flag, which didn't allow us to back cap. We couldn't really talk about it with the rest of the team because most of them had left by that point before looking at the actual second map. So that was just some confusion. But you know and then what? Killer was straight out wrong. So Killer all, was straight out wrong. And all of this to say is that our arguing is why we didn't cap first. But we all came together in the end because it really, that's just what we do, right? We, we know what to do. We know each other. We know what, yeah, uh, what each of us point, do. After a certain point, you say, all right, we got to we gotta focus up and get our shit together. Yeah. Which we did. Well, Zapstar, tell us your perspective during that. So, Scott, Scott, from my understanding of what the argument was going on, again, I was not part of the office show tonight. Scott was there on my behalf. And Scott sided with Zoo's opinion, from what I believe, on where the middle point was. And when he redirected, he, he said, Maryland had, I believe it was, was it Bravo? I honestly can't remember off the top Season of my head. We, we went to fucking mid. We went straight there. We secured that objective. And then I, I do remember finding myself alongside uh, First Taxes. And the enemy guns are, are like facing us. And I remember shouting at Harris, First Taxes Harris. I, <laughs> I don't know what his rank is or what have you. And I told him, I said, Harris, we need to vacate this position. The guns are loaded and they're facing us. Marilyn is going to do this. You just forward this to your officer. I'm not sure who the fuck it is. No offense, Texan. I just didn't know. And, and I said, we're going this way. We're going to flank right. And then he did so. And Marilyn and Texas crushed the enemy in front of us. This was the second map? Yes. I think I may, I may have been down, but I remember it was on the corner near the caissons, right? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think yeah, I, I was, was just down. shouting at, like, whatever members of First Texas were there, because they were an intermix with a line. I said, we gotta fucking get out of here. There's there's three cannons facing us right now in this tree line. We gotta fucking move. Yeah, and I, I told them what I was I, doing. I was trying to tell my going say, guys, we gotta get. We gotta. <laughs> this is not and, it. And the only reason I, I remember Harris, because Harris used to be part of Maryland way back in the day. But mm -hmm. I remember him being right there. I said, listen here, Harris, you need to forward this to your officer. We are fucking moving. <laughs> As you can hear, Eagle, in the beginning, there was no strategy. And then we brought it together and did our, our normal whole two-point strat. And the Union put up a fantastic fight. So yeah, that was it from us. One, one big advantage that we have is that we know how each other thinks. And that we don't necessarily have to be in each other's ear to do that. And we can finish each other's sentences. Correct. Damn in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, like, these lads, from what I hear, didn't know exactly where Maryland was. They're a good portion of both maps. But they knew we were doing work. And they knew that we'd just show up at the right place at the right time. And we'd fucking put the fucking bayonets right in those guts. Absolutely. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you for that. Move on to the USA side. What was your guys' strategy going into the round, and how did you guys react to the Virginia battlefield? Uh, it was much the same as the first. Uh, we ended up splitting our forces off uh, initially uh, to get the dual cap going. Um, and then the heavy, I don't. it was my first time playing that map, uh, so I don't remember the letters. Uh, but the, on the left side, of, for the Union perspective, uh, that's where the uh, heavy fighting turned out to be. Uh, that's where the majority of the fighting was. Uh, so once we got both of those points, we all started to kind of converge on that area. Um, and then it, just like the just like the CSA, it came down to reacting to the enemy's movements. Uh, they would move this way, we would try and counter that. Uh, but ultimately, uh, it's conquest mode. You have to hold two points. And uh, we didn't. Uh, so we lost the one, and it just kind of went down from there. Um, I know the 5th Virginia, under my command ended up pulling back and being a more defensive force for our point that we held on the right side. Um, but it was always just, we need to cap this point, we need to cap this point, and we never really got to it. And I think that's what ended up shooting us in the foot. Yeah, it ended up being where we we pushed initially at first, and we no, no loads or anything, just go. 
got on to the point, capped the point, and then got our loads and bayos. And by the time that happened, you guys started showing up. And then uh, 6LA was on the other side of Charlie while the other forces were on the other side, uh, on one side. And we kind of had you guys relatively in a fishbowl, but you guys ended up surrounding us on the other side and knocked us out before we could even uh, fully commit and push in to uh, retake our battery once you guys took it. Uh, after a while, we lost Charlie and we couldn't keep Charlie and indecisiveness to, to push in on the point hurt us in the long run. So while you guys were very cohesive, we are unfortunately not on the same wavelength on that. Uh, at one point, we attached a small group that we call Strike Force to move out a decap beat behind you guys to try to pull you guys away, hopefully to, to do something to push in on Charlie. Uh, unfortunately, we were able to execute once we did that, and that was about, and it was just a stalemate at that point. We couldn't do anything. To add what Neof said, um, the Union on that second map did very well. Uh, if I remember right, it's the far left from our perspective, I believe it was A, and they were able to infiltrate our rear line, like so very much so, they had units between our primary fighting force and our spawn. So, like, Marilyn would, like, get fucking annihilated, right? And then we'd be advancing as a reformed unit into an area that, by all rights, should be held by us. And we'd encounter large Union units in between us and, like, our primary line. And uh, you lads did fantastic trying to cut off our spawn point from the rest of the field. And what I did through, what Marilyn and I did through predominantly that second map is we tried to contest you as much as we could in those woods. And it was, we were in a mix, we were all over each other. And let me say, it was, it was fucking hard fighting. You lads did fucking fantastic there. Yeah, thank you for that. I think the second map was definitely uh, the better played map on both sides. Um, the first one, you guys are just able to sit there so easily and between those two points and hold them. That second one, gave us, we gave you a run for your fucking money a bit. At least you got to give us a little bit of credit, you know. But uh, no, it, ultimately, it comes down to holding the two points. And you guys prevented us from doing that, and that's why and that's why we got the results that we did. So congratulations to you guys. You played well. Thank you, sir. Thank but you I, again, I can't say enough. The amount of times I'm like, how the fuck do they have a full union line here? And like, I'm sitting there with trying to redirect Barrel and to face off against like a unit we just surprisingly encountered in the woods. Guys, you did fucking great there. And honestly, honestly, if you had been able to tie down a larger portion of our units in those woods between our spawn and the primary like contested fields, it very well could have turned in your favor. Easily. So fucking out outstanding work. Yeah, it felt like we had more advantage in the woods than trying to fight out in the open in the sea area. Like, once you lose sea, it's kind of hard to recap that because it's wide open field. So we had better advantages in utilizing the woods area. And I noticed when we we found a good spot uh, in the woods and it was just enough to, like, overlook both A and C, we were able to, like you said, cut off a lot of your units and keep uh, keep them back a little bit. But when we tried to, like, full recovery to C, we started losing that. And after that, we just couldn't recover because we kept focusing on C over time. And it just really, really was hard at that point. Oh, yeah. And, and one thing I do want to add to, to what I had said before is that there were a lot of detached units from both 5th NC and 1st Texas that were encountering the woods as well, doing the very same thing that Maryland was. So it wasn't just Maryland trying to counter you lads. It was, it was a combined front from all of us. Like, we've got skirmisher companies, or rather skirmisher units, amongst all of our brigade. 
that we're doing the very same thing. We'd, we'd find you lads in the woods and we just did our best to try and push you back and try like to front you lads off. Because while you had cut off our spawn very much, we were just trying to meet those units and contest them so that continued reinforcements could out of the front. And honestly, like that play on your part was very, very smart in my opinion. Any other comments from Union for second round? Hmm. The end of the thing shown very high out of lines and very high skirmish. Uh, just it seems like conquest maps give people this idea to say, "Oh, I can go Rambo or something." <laughs> I don't know, or either that. But I, from my perspective as playing just private and what wasn't really doing any commanding anything at all. So uh, the first map. Uh, I saw three flags all in one place, kind of going with one line. I thought, what's up with that? You know, <laughs> isn't there one flag, one formation? And then the second map, uh, uh, we were trying to, t I saw waves of us trying to retake the artillery position, the Union artillery position, uh, playing the Union side, of course, uh, but it just wasn't happening. It kept coming in waves, but not concentration. I the thing, agree. A lot of it came down to cohesion. Uh, it's uh, at the end of the day, the cohesion just wasn't there. I have um, a question. Go right ahead. How come the Union team didn't make a significant play for B, the objective closest to us? Uh, that's a good question. I think our uh, I think our main focus um, would be on that. Uh, was it C? The C point? Yeah, it was C. Mm -hmm. You had C that was out in the open field, yeah. and then you had Alpha that was in the woods. Right. We held. We got Alpha. We held. Up, we held down Alpha up until the very end. Uh, but our main focus was on C for some reason, and I think that if we try something for long enough and it doesn't work, then we do need to shift our attention elsewhere. Yeah, because we left. I think that's somewhere we went wrong. We left that B point yes. pretty much completely undefended. The win. Right. And I know that was it, was it you guys courted the six LA that detached the unit and went and capped that eventually. Or? Yeah, we we did a strike force and we moved back there and we decapped it and we saw like there was nobody back there. Right. We could have easily kept you guys like down one cap constantly, and I, I feel like we were so focused on one point and not focusing our attention anywhere else, and that we just got blindsided onto. Char uh, on C point, and the other issue I noticed it, that this goes towards what Gray said. I noticed whenever we play Conquest, we seem to be in like this mad rush mode. I mean, sometimes we might need to slow down and just gather up and figure out what we're going to do and be decisive on that. Yeah, I could definitely agree. It's, it's, it all seems so rushed. Uh, because with these points, if somebody hold, if someone's holding the majority, it's just constantly sinking away tickets, and I think that's a lot of the reason that uh, these regimental leaders, myself included, uh, are so rushed to make these decisions, when in reality we might have just a moment to take a second and think about the next plan instead of getting tunnel vision and focusing on one point when we don't necessarily need to. Uh, I think our attention could have easily been shifted elsewhere, and it could have been better time spent uh but hey there's always next time right yeah what we're here for well i'll definitely go rematch get you guys it was fun any fucking day mate love playing with you lads you you lads fought well absolutely any other comments or questions before we call it off uh there can only be one star so Zepstar, we're going to have to do it one day. We're going to have to do it one We shall have this engagement star. We're ready, for the, we're ready for the three-on-three -three contest. We, we'll have to have a have a rematch. And like at the very beginning, it's it's star against star. Yeah. Bales, let's go. Let's do it. I'll do it. I'll do it any fucking day, mate. You and me. Generals we got fight this. each other. You, you form go form up your companies, your brigades, or whatever, and you want go out by yourself, and the generals fight each other. We'll see what happens. Blood oh, is blood. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, that would be that would be a lot of fun right there. I'm gonna have to practice though. I welcome this challenge, Star, and I also salute you as a fellow member of the Star family.
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Zap start, I'll be your second. Thank you, son. I... <laughs> Glory awaits. All right, cool. Um, with that being said, thank you for everyone for participating in this post game interview. All the socials of everyone will be in the description of this video. Also, all the regiments that participated in this event will be in the description of the video. Join them. Lots of fun. And with that being said, please like, comment, share, subscribe for more. Join our Discord. We need more frontline reporters and announcers because it's very cool getting different perspectives all in one stream. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll see you guys in the next one.